Hello, Culture Matters Podcast. I'm so excited to introduce you to our guest. But before I do that, here is a quote that I picked just for this episode. Management is doing things right. Leadership is doing the right things. My good friend, Matt McHale, who I actually met many years ago, speaking at an event, has a powerful career working uh, from 99 to 2016, 17, I believe, for an organization that he exited. Uh, ever since then that I've known him, he's been an advisor to those smart enough to listen, consultant, uh, managing partner of Arcasis, that from my understanding, helps organizations clarify their vision, leverage their culture, increase performance, and using data and analytics actually continually grow the company so that they don't dwindle and die on their own fuse as uh, what do they breathe in their own exhaust as they say but outside of all that um matt is somebody that has always made time to meet with me over the years and and, and be an ear and be a voice and put up with me in my butter caterpillar butterfly phases and i uh, i can't believe it's been this long for you to come on the show. So I really, uh, I'm honored and and grateful. And and uh, I recommend the audience to pay close attention. Absolutely, man. I am so glad we finally are, are sitting down and doing this. We've talked about this for a while. So thank you for having me. Thank you for the lovely introduction. Uh, no, man, it's just great. I'm, I'm looking forward to the conversation. I'm looking forward to uh, discussing some things a little bit. Yeah, like you said, uh, our background, how we met all those things. I want to talk a little bit about your haircut <laughs> the other day. Uh, I'm, I'm open. I'm sure your hair feels, uh, your head feels a little lighter right now, but uh, no, absolutely. I, I love uh, what you've done with culture matters. And, and, and as you said, you're like everyone, all of us go through it, just your journey to, to get here and uh, you know, going through figuring out these things and figuring out um, where you wanted to to be and what you really wanted to do when you, when you quote unquote grow up. Uh, and I think you've done a, a phenomenal job and, and oh, with everything across the board, but especially with, with this podcast, I'm excited to be on it. I, I should shout out, you know, Jen Groover has been on the podcast and if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't know each other. I don't think because yeah. we met in an event that she had put up together all those years ago, yep. uh, jumpstart startup. I think that was like a big deal for my, and Wayne Kimmel, I met there and I've had him on the YouTube when, before we did the podcast and that is where we met, right? Uh, that is, yes. I, 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 you know, we might have met once or twice before that, but that was really where we connected. I, I would say definitely that's where we connected. Uh, I think the strongest, uh, and because we had time there, you know, we we had it was it was a great event. Uh, as uh, Jay said, Jen Groover put it on, and it was you know kind of a, a business in a box, so to speak, for startups. You had all these different you know companies it clearly worked that, for us that, that could help, yeah, and, and that could help companies. And and I was there uh, at the time with one of the companies I was, uh, had, uh, the video production. So we're talking to people about video production and, and helping with that. And, uh, yeah, I think that's, that's where we really connected uh, at that point. So, you know, being in the Philly area and different things, we probably, we had probably run into each other once or twice before like, Hey, I know that guy, but yeah. So sure. o o o over these years, I want to dig in here because I didn't actually do now that I recall, I didn't do, I could have done an even better job with the intro. I know that you've worked with Microsoft and, and Salesforce and, I don't know how I forgot this in the intro. Um, it just came to my mind, like the places like um, Aramark, I've always seen him in Philly. Yep. Um, so in what capacity and what should the audience know? Because clearly, you know, you're someone we need to be listening to. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I had my uh, initial company that I started uh, back in the day. You know, I went I went from a sale, I was doing software sales and did that for, for a while. Also, while I was bartending. Uh, you know, and then I uh, got into consulting and, and that was um, more on the uh, the quality assurance project management side of things. Uh, and that's where I started to get into yeah, working with the hour marks of the world, working, um, uh, you know, with Microsoft on a, on a joint project with them. Um, Real point was a, it was a GMAC um, system back then that we were, we were working on and, and trying to develop and test and do everything. Uh, during, during all that. Yeah. That, that was during like 2000, 2001. 
uh, and, and uh, you know, worked at cdnow.com, which was bought by a little company called Amazon. You might have heard of them. Huh. Uh, I worked wow. at wingspanbank.com, which was the first internet bank. Uh, and, and the biggest problem we had back then was how are they going to get money into accounts? Uh, because they're trying to cut deals with uh, we now know as ATM machines. Back then, we were still calling them a Mac machine. Uh, you know, how, how are they going to be able to you know cut deals with them? Because there was no PayPal, there was no Venmo, there's no other way to get money into it. Um, so, but that you know, so there's a lot of dot coms that unfortunately became the dot bombs back then that that no one went through. Uh, and I think our our mark was my my last big. Um, with that, and and while we we're doing that and working on it, started another company called Global DMS, which worked in the mortgage space, uh, specifically the valuation side. So it dealt with the real estate appraisals, dealt with uh, uh, you know all, all the things of of valuing houses, LOS systems, and everything else that goes into that. And as you said, did that um, for for a number of years. Uh, exited that company in 2016. Uh, and, and while I was still there, I actually started Arcasis. Was doing some other things with Arcasis. So I I always kind of Started something before I left one thing, um, but then once I left there, I went full time with Arcasis, and I have done that uh, ever since. Uh, and, and then also at that time, working with a lot of different nonprofits as well. My wife and I started a nonprofit, and um, we went through that sure. and, and did a couple of different boards of nonprofits and work with those. So that's why uh, I'm doing a lot of work with the nonprofits right now as well. What did you learn in the dot com bust? Uh, I think the biggest thing uh, is to make sure that uh, your your plan uh, coincides with your with your revenue, coincides with your growth model. Uh, you know, it, it was one of those things where, and we're seeing it now again, Jay, a lot with uh, AI. You know, companies are just throwing dot AI on their website, or you know, saying you know, you say, oh, we're yes. using AI. Uh, to get money, you know, and, and, and people are looking at it and say, yeah, let's, you know, we got to get in on this. We got to, you know, invest in it. So it was the same with the dot coms, you know, and, um, you know, there, there was, there was some good ones. Um, you know, I think wings, wingspan had some really cool things and they had, they had some big banks, be, you know, a big bank behind them. Uh, CD now again was bought by Amazon. It was, it was, that was probably one of the best ones there, but they just grew so fast because they had the money. Um, but didn't really kind of look at, you know, where are we going from here? You know, where, 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 you know, what's the, what's the five-year plan? What's the, you know, what's, what's going to happen next? So I think they were just kind of moving so fast because you get money. And, and for, for people that start a business or talk about that, they talk about getting investors and that can be good, but it also comes a lot of issues, you know, and it comes with a lot of problems. And if you don't manage that right, and if you don't set that up right, you're going to run into issues. And I think that's what it was, is just kind of um, the biggest thing was, was to learn that is watching these guys had all this money and they were just able to throw all this money at this, but that doesn't always solve the problems, you know? So, so having that, that plan and having that, that, that true business uh, identity and plan behind it, uh, that's what really needed. And a lot of the, a lot of them just kind of lost focus on that. They were just excited, you know, to be in the dot coms, just like they're excited right now. Like, Oh, we got to get an AI. We got to, we got to get involved in this. What are some of the diminishing returns of having too much capital in a startup? Um, well, the biggest one is what are you giving up to get that capital? So when, when you know, when, when talk, people talk about, you know, getting investors and, and having these people come in, sounds great, but what do you have to give up for that? You know, never give up control uh, of your company. You know, this is your company. This is your vision. Um, you want to control the culture. You want to control all those things. You give up. Um, control of your business, you can't do that. So that's, that's first and foremost is, is make sure to do that. Um, the other thing is if you don't have a solid plan and, you know, and everybody thinks they do, you know, we want, we see the shark tank and all this stuff where like, they'll talk about numbers and everything there. But even those, you start to look at, you know, the, the, the companies came out of that show. A lot of them didn't, you know, they'll hear, we'll hear success stories. A lot of them didn't do that well. Cause again, they didn't have a good plan of, Really, what was going to what was going to happen with the money? Oh, fifty thousand dollars going to go to marketing. Okay, well, where exactly is that going to go? What exactly is that going to do? How are you going to reach that? Who's your ideal client? Who's all those things? You know, the, you drill down to that that level, the next level, the next level to say that. So you're giving something up 
uh, and usually a pretty big part of your company if you're a startup because it's going to take a lot to get that money in there. So if you're going to give that up, you better have a solid plan and know exactly where you're going to do uh, to make that sacrifice. When the, the, the how could someone figure out if how does how does one figure out if they don't have a good plan if they think they do have a good plan? Um, so the best way to look at it is how does the marketplace respond to what you're doing and, and what, you know, what, what your company is up to, what your service is, all those things. How is the marketplace seeing that? You know, so a lot of people think when they, you know, again, go to the investors, get the money. That's when we're going to start getting the sales coming in. We're going to do this. That you should be able to do that. You should already be on a path of success before mm -hmm. that. And you're going to say, this money is just going to boom. It's going to speed us up. And that's why it's going to be worth it. It's not going to take something that's flatline and then just throw money into it and, you, and you're going to be there, you know, unless you're getting, you know, a company that's already kind of been there or could be mm -hmm. a solid partner because you're in the same type of, of um, you know, whether you're going to have the same people or, or the same type of company um, and you can, you know, they can be, oh, you guys come in. We have a, a full so a, uh, client base. We can sell your stuff to. Boom. That makes sense. But uh, otherwise, if you're, the marketplace is not responding to you, maybe not as fast as you want to. But if you're on an upward project, you know, trajectory and, and you're making those projections and seeing, yeah, this is where we're going to be in, in a year, two years, three years, the money's not going to solve that. Fundam fundamentals that break down success in your view, what are some of the fundamentals that break down success in, in all your experience and observations of businesses and different? So when, when you're, when you're saying, you're saying what, what, how do the fundamentals break down? What are the good things or what breaks down within no, the, I yeah, that's that, that hurts. That no, hurts. no, no, fundamental, uh, like with the not to do's. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I should have clarified the, the, like they, they'll break down, they'll undermine something good. Yep. Um, yeah, the, the, the one is, uh, growing too fast, uh, too, too quickly. You know, if, if you're trying to, um, you know, focus on too many things, you know, you know, figure out what you're going to do and what you're really good at uh, and start, you know, going after that. Uh, and then you can bring more people onto it and then bringing more people on. That is so important. You know, pe people think, you know, we can do that, you know, especially if you're a startup and you haven't done it before and you start to look for people, uh, especially if you're going to bring people in at a C level, um, do they really fit in with the culture? You know, do, do they really, you know, is this going to be a good, you know, we, We've we, I've I've hired C level people and uh, and brought them in like man this this is not working mm. at all and it's not that person wasn't good at their job and it wasn't it wasn't they weren't qualified to do the job that we needed just wasn't going to work in this culture in this environment or you know in in this in this business sense you know um, you know if you look at you know some some businesses run a little differently uh, and they're going to act a little differently. And that doesn't mean someone who's, you know, comes from the accounting world, um, you know, the accountings are, are, you know, that's solid. We, we know that's going to work, but just that, that person, the way, the way they are, and it's just the way they look at business, it's not going to fit in with us over here. You know, we're, we're a little more risk taking, we're doing this stuff and that could slow you down. That, that, that could mess things up. And then that causes that friction within the company and do, doing those things. So I think that, you know, that growing too fast, but then bringing the wrong people in, uh, at the wrong times, you know, we always heard that, you know, maybe you have the right people on the bus in the wrong seats mm -hmm. uh, or you just have the wrong people. But yeah, it, it really becomes a problem if, if you, if you have the, the wrong people in and don't recognize it right away or even before you make the decision. Why? Why? Um, it, it just, you know, from a company morale standpoint, you know, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at some of the things from a personal standpoint when, when it happened, you know, from company morale it just it didn't go well um from you know because you you have these you know you have people there that you know started from the beginning and, and we're at the company and great workers and everything and if they just feel oh man this this person you know this person new person is probably going to come in and be their boss if they're that that c level and if they're like oh, man this doesn't you know all of a sudden you, you you know you can lose some of those new people or you can have this, you know, where, where you're, you know, you're not as, you know, together, together as you were before when you're talking about the vision and what you're trying to accomplish and where you're going and, and where you had meetings before with the core team, uh, those meetings just become, 
arguments or those meetings just become less and less because it's like, you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with it. I, I don't want to want to go through all that stuff. And, and you just go through and look at, you know, is it worth it for this, this person at this level to be here in those skills, if it's going to bring, you know, bring the rest of us down and, and bring other people um, to, to end up leaving the company or, 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 you know, or all those things go into it, you know? So, um, and then, and then the skill set too, you know, if, if we're talking about a startup, uh, you know, if you bring somebody in, they're probably going to have to wear a couple different hats. And if they're coming from corporate America and they got that solid background, they know this is what we do and they come into it and they're not used to, you know, being able to jump around and wear different hats and, and fill different roles when needed, uh, that, that could be a problem, you know, and they can be like, listen, that's not what I was hired for, you know? And you're like, well, well I get it, but you know, this is what we all do. You know, so if that conversation is not clear, if you don't have that and you don't, you don't think about that, because again, you didn't come from corporate America, they didn't come from the startup world. And now you're bringing these two things in and, and, and there's been plenty of times where it worked, it worked out great. Um, but there's been times too, when it's like, yeah, it's just, it's, this is not just going to work out. You mentioned meetings. What makes great meeting in your estimation? Um, the, the, the biggest thing is an agenda for, for the meeting having the clarity of, you know, why are we even meeting to begin with? You know, you, you, you have um, companies a lot of times might have too many meetings or uh, don't have a solid agenda so they can get in and, and kind of go off the rails, um, having a way to deal with that. Because there, there's, there's times, look, you have an agenda and you go in, you start having a conversation and all of a sudden that leads to two other things that wasn't on the agenda, but you realize, man, these are just as important. How do you handle that? You know, you, you, are you going to take now this half hour meeting, make it an hour meeting? Um, because then that throws off other people and they had other things scheduled or things went on, but you're like, no, this is, this is more important. You know, if you're the CEO or president, you're like, no, we're staying here and discussing this. And everyone's also like, well, you know, this is only going until nine 30. And, and, you know, I had this other thing, not going to push this people on their phones trying to, you know, set up another meeting, whatever it is. Um, so a way to deal with those things, you know, so if those things come up in the meeting and say, yeah, that's important and we got to do that, let's, let's do that with this. Yeah. And you have a way to do that. Uh, so either you have that system in there, or you have someone in, in, in that meeting to say, get yeah, boom, you know, they come out and they're, they're going to be the note taker. They're going to be the person with all that. We now have AI. Um, so we can do a lot of that, you know, it has all that breakdown. I mean, you know, zoom, we're on zoom right now. They've got a great, you know, AI system. And do I use fireflies, other systems out there that what, what does that do? You can record fireflies yeah. or those things. So fireflies records the, the whole meeting. So if I go into a zoom meeting, uh, with my clients or anything, it's re record the whole meeting. So not only records the video part of it, more importantly for me, it, it, it records all of the uh, audio and then just does the um, transcribes all, all of it. So I can go right back into it and do it. Zoom's AI, you're going to be able to come into a Zoom. Let's say someone came in this Zoom late right now. They're going to be able to jump on and say, man, ca catch me up. What, what did Matt and Jay talk about so far? And it's going to be able to give them a synopsis of the things that were discussed. So now you're coming to that meeting you already know what was already discussed there. And you can either say, Hey, Hey guys, can we go back real quick when you're talking about uh, Aramark and some of the other stuff there um, and, and be able to pull back into a meeting or you just, you know, you, you can now jump in, know what they're talking about and, and you're not like trying to figure things out as you go along. Is so, that already out? Um, the, the zoom one is, is coming out. It's they're starting to release it. I don't think it's released for everyone yet. Wow. Fireflies and uh, that's available now. So I, I, I've been using that. Um, and they don't have the, I don't think they have the real time, uh, updates yet either. Um, but both of those, are, they'll, they'll be out soon. You know, Michael militia was on this podcast and it, and it, I didn't know what it was. And it came back and it said, I asked like a few hundred questions or something like that. Right. Yeah. So, so it'll break down all the questions that, that you go through. So, so it'll, once it does a transcription, uh, it, it gives, you know, a, a summary of everything. It puts all, it shows you all the questions that you asked. So you can go back and say, yeah, what were those questions? So let's say you're talking to, I, that's more of like if a client was on there and then you go back to all your clients and say, well, here's all the questions they asked, you know, and, and make sure, did we answer these all fully? Do we have to go back and do something uh, with those? Um, so, so for, for me, you know, that was, you know, early on when, when these things start coming out and AI was really popping to me, that was um, some of the best things that are out there. Obviously we, we've, you know, we've expanded to, to a lot more things now, um, but that, yeah, the, those, those things are great. Is Firefly public? Uh, is that a public company? Who owns that? That is a good question. I don't know. I, I probably should know that. 
Uh, I don't know if it's pub public or private at this point. How do you spell it? Um, it's, I think it's just Firefly. So F I R E uh, F L I E S, I believe they spell it. So is it on the, yeah, if you, if you look under the, uh, I wanted to download this. What's your biggest secret? Just kidding. <laughs> because it's catching all of the, that's amazing. Right. I'm going to look into that. So, so um, yeah, but so we have it on here. It, it popped in, it comes in with me. So, holy cow. Um, so, your yeah, take yeah. on, well, I'll, send it, I'll send it over to you when we're done. Please. I'll what send it over your, to you when we're done. What and, is uh, your take on artificial intelligence's utility for businesses right now? I think it's crucial right now um, for, for people to be using it, using it correctly. Um, but every week I, I do a segment on Clubhouse, 1130 on Mondays, um, and I go on and talk about, you know, all, all the things that are going on in AI that week, uh, everything that happened, you know, and and every week, Jay, I have to like, okay, I got 30 minutes to talk about this. What am I, you know, what am I going to focus on? Because there's so many things I could do a two-hour show on every week, uh, but I don't have the time, and, and most people don't have the time to listen to that. So I'm just going to focus on, you know, what things are important, um, new systems that came out. You know, I have a whole page that I'll uh, I'll have people, the people that are listening on there, they can click on that. You know, and they, it can show the new AI systems that are available or, hey, this is what, you know, OpenAI uh, updated with, you know, ChatGPT or Dolly 3 or or all, all these things. So I'll, I'll go through um, basically highlights in, uh, of the of the past week and, um, it was a lot, a lot of good, you know, YouTube videos out there on it and, and different things you can do it. But I, I definitely, you know, for your business, you, you need to start, you know, following that, following what's going on with it and then figuring out what's going to work best for you. You know, if, it, if you're using Zoomies or something like that, those things are crucial for, for that. If you don't have that at this point, you're, you're just, you're wasting your time uh, and you're, you're absolutely, you're missing out on some stuff. You know, there, there, there's no question about it, you know, to be able to go in and do that synopsis and do that. You know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big YouTuber. Uh, I, I love, you know, going on and watching videos and YouTube and everything. I can, I can't tell you the amount that do I do, I do the uh, transcription for now. So you, there's a number of different tools out there you can put on YouTube. YouTube now has its own that it came out with recently that you can say, give me a summary of this video. So I know what's, you know, what's, what's happening with it. And it'll boom, come back with a whole bunch of bullet points and you can click on that and they'll give you sub bullet points to each one. So I can go, do I need, you know, do I need to go listen to this? Do I need more detail on that? Or, or is that enough? Because, you know, again, we only have so much time uh, in, in a day. You know, I think, you know, we look at Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hours. Mm. I think with AI, that's really going to be a thousand hours, you know, very soon. Because I think you can really, you know, not to, not to steal a Grant Cardone or somebody, you know, 10X that, um, you know, use your time more wisely and use these tools to be able to propel yourself, you know, not only from uh, an understanding of things, um, but just, you know, gather more information uh, and be able to disseminate more information, share more information than, than any time before. So, uh, yeah, it's is absolutely crucial for businesses uh, to be using it, to understand it uh, and figure out what's what's the best thing for them. And, and you know, I'm, I've been helping a lot of a lot of business owners do that now uh, going through and saying, yeah, let's let's look at what's you know, what some of the best tools are for you. Uh, so things are speeding up when it comes to artificial intelligence. Money yep. is more expensive. What are you seeing out there on the street as it relates to small business? What's the morale? Who's winning? How? Who's not? Why? Yeah, I think, um, you know, the, the money being more expensive definitely hurts. Um, but there's still a lot of investor money. You know, it's, it, this is, it's a weird, weird time when, when you look at, you know, and, and this has happened the last few years um, during the pandemic. Uh, you, you know, you, you watch, we're watching the stock market and you think, oh, here comes, you know, this is going to crash hard and it doesn't, and, and it keeps going up and, and there's still money. And, and, and obviously there's been a lot uh, in the news of different, you know, how much, you know, different CEOs are making all the things that are going on because of it. Um, but there's, there's, there's definitely still a lot of money out there, a lot of investor money. Uh, so from that standpoint, again, that's why I think a lot of companies are, are you know, attaching AI and those things. Uh, I think the companies that are hurting are more uh, the service service oriented companies that are, you know, that, that need to have those supplies and need to have those things. Um, we've seen those you know become a little better uh, as of late, but when they don't have, you know, the supplies, when they can't, you know, 
uh, have the lumber to do things or, or you know, or, or these, you know, different things that are needed for business, there's nothing you can do, you know? So um, I think overall, it hasn't been as bad. It hasn't been as bad as I thought it would be. And I think, I think for a lot of people, um, but I'm also still worried that, that, that we're going to see things get worse before they get better um, from, from those things. So, but I, and I think, you know, it's funny because we see it in AI right now. And I think you're going to see, in, you know, the, the consolidation of businesses. I think this is a time where um, if you're interested in starting your own business, uh, you can look to buy a business right now, you know, or look to become a partner in a business, you know? So uh, I think there's uh, always opportunities out there available for that to, to be able to look at those things and say, Hey, this is great. I have some money, you know, I, I've uh, done the right things. I, I've, I've put some money away. Maybe this is the time to, you know, to, to look at somebody, you know, to, to look and becoming, um, you know, the franchise model is, is one thing. Um, but like looking at something that's a business that you can, you know, become a partner in that is, you know, you know, your business or, or something that you a partner in. So, so I think overall, I think, you know, companies are still doing okay, but you know, it, it's hard, you know, when you, when you look at the overall prices, you look at gas, you look at everything else that goes into it. You know, if you got, if you got a, you know, 10 trucks out there on a the road, you know, versus a couple of years ago, that's a lot of money you're spending just, just to, you know, move those trucks around. Mm. Mm. What are you most excited about? Where are the opportunities? Um, I'm definitely most excited about AI and, and, and where, where things are there and, and opportunities that will come out of that. You know, people talk a lot about, um, you know, people, you know, jobs being replaced and, and, you know, people, and, and they're certainly going to happen to some extent. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen as fast as people think it's going to, <clears throat> but in some, some areas, you know, there, you're certainly going to see that but it's also going to create a lot of jobs. You know, there, there's a lot that people, you know, they need someone to be a subject matter expert in, uh, you know, AI in, in some of these models, you, you're still going to need these things. You know, you're, you're, you, you can ask AI to write, write code and put those things together. Um, but you still need to have a, you know, a reason why you're asking it and putting those projects together and being a, a project manager and, you know, uh, and those kind of things where maybe you were, maybe you were a coder before and that's, you know, you were definitely going to see a lot less need for coders. Um, you know, we're even seeing it now because, you know, chat GPT and some of these other systems can write code really well uh, or correct code that's out there and tell you where the issues are, you know, but that, but they still need someone to kind of figure that out and guide that through there, you know? So it's like anything else where if you continue to stay mm. on top of these trends and you can continue to learn these things and understand it, like chat GPT is great. Um, but you're going to have a lot of companies are going to want their own version of chat GPT internally for all of their information and for all their systems, you know, so who's going to manage that for them? You know, there, there's going to be a lot of things like that that will come out of this uh, and we'll be able to see where, where these things take place and, and how these things take place over time. What, let's say someone's starting uh, taking a business from um, 1 million to 10 million. What are the uh, uh, variables that are going to uh, uh, decrease that likelihood of being able to go for that one to that five and that five to that 10? Uh, so that's a great question. I actually have a client I'm talking to right now that uh, that's where they're at, you know, and they're like, hey, listen, we're, you know, we, we've done pretty good here. You know, we're, we're you know, doing, uh, they're actually a little, little higher. Um, they're probably closer to 10 million and want to go well beyond that, but it's the kind of the same principles, you know, when you look at it and say, what can you do? Um, the first thing that a business really needs to look at again is the people. Um, because if you have a CEO that has started that, you know, and usually you typically have someone who starts a company and, you know, they become the CEO as the company starts to grow and they're getting to a million or 5 million, 10 million there's only so far they're going to be able to take it in most cases. There's always exceptions to the rules, but in most cases, it's going to be the people, the people that you started with and gotten to where you are, are not going to be the same people that are going to take you to that next level. Not that they're not going to be there and they'll certainly can be there and be in a role, but you're going to have to bring in new people and other people. And that goes back to, you know, making sure you're hiring the right people for the culture and everything, but you're going to need those people to take you 
to that next level and, 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 you know, help you to understand things. And again, AI is going to help a lot of these things, you know, as far as understanding of information and, um, you know, being able to gather information and be able to figure these things out. And, uh, you know, we see AI, you know, making uh, call phone calls now and, uh, doing things. I mean, you know, I, I, I play an AI voice, uh, every week. Um, well, you know, I've got my roadcaster set up here and I have some things recorded that I have all set up when I go into clubhouse and I'll have a, you know, AI voice uh, and I use a system called 11 labs and it'll, you, you couldn't tell if I played it right now, you wouldn't know the difference between us talking and that. Um, you know, when it first started, you're like, Oh, I can kind of tell you have the point now, like, yeah, yeah I, I can't, tell. you know, and, and especially if you, you know, use it for voiceovers or something, you play a little music bed to it. You'll never know if it's that or not. Also, I could take this recording of you and I, and then have AI Matt and AI Jay having a conversation by, by tomorrow. Uh, and, and it'll sound just, just like us talking, you know, so, so there's so many things there that's going to help uh, magnify that and be able to use those tools, but it still comes back to the people and it still comes back to, to understanding that uh, and, and then understanding that, you know, having the right process in place and having the right plan in place to say, you know, what, you know, how are you going to grow from a, a million, you know, can you just do it because, you don't have the bandwidth right now. You have, you have so many people that want your service or your product that, man, I, I know I can go to 5 million. I just need, you know, maybe you need that, that capital to be able to, you know, to, to buy the things you need to be able to do more on that or the service side. I just need more people uh, to be able to come in and, and be able to execute on those things. You know, so do you already have that? Or are you saying, no, I, I don't, you know, there, there's, I don't really have this, this need there right now. I don't, or I don't, you know, I don't see, I'm not you know, overwhelmed with, you know, with prospects that I can't fulfill it. Um, but I know if I do this, it'll get there, you know? So there, there, there are two different conversations. There are two different ways to look at things. You know, the, the, the first one, may seem easier and, and probably a lot of times it would be because you're like, man, it's already there. We just need to be able to crank it up, you know? And that's, that's when it, it might make a sense for investor money. Um, the second one is like, okay, maybe why isn't it there? Or maybe are you going to add another service or product on top of what you do? So you already have this loyal customer base. Now I can sell two or three things with them and I can double my business without even bringing a new person in because I've taken these things and being able to, you know, sell to my current customer base. So there, there's a lot of different ways to look at it and you have to understand the marketplace. You have to understand where you are in the marketplace and what your demand is, uh, and, and then, you know, where the competitors are at and, and all those things lay in, you know, play into it, um, and, and can cause, you know, either issues or can help, you know, to propel you to that next level. Where does work ethic come in? <laughs> so when you say work ethic, are we talking about working hard and, and the things that go into it or having ethics? So, so I'll, I'll tell you right now when, when, you know, the term business ethics is, is BS. There's no such thing as business ethics. A business doesn't have ethics. People have ethics and they bring them into business. They bring them into your, your personal life. You bring them in anywhere. So when people talk about business ethics, it doesn't exist. And, you know, I used to argue with my professor back at Villanova about these things when, when we would have that discussion, but it, it doesn't, you know? So, so when we talk about ethics, it, is it, you know, the, the ethics of, you know, working hard, you know, figuring these things out. And, you know, the, it's, there's the, you know, the grind, uh, and, and hustle mentality that, you know, uh, has, has some blowback as of late to the point of, Hey man, I want a balanced life. Hey, I, I want this. I want those things, you know, and, and that's fine. And, and that's great. You know, you just have to know, um, you have to understand what the price is going to pay. You know, if you want that, balanced life, if you want to do those things, then there's only a certain amount you, you can get to, to where you're at. Um, there's a lot of people who be like, there, there is no such thing as balanced life. You know, you, you can't have a balanced life. You, you have to go through this, you know, do, you know, do, do all those things. So there's so many different uh, mentalities and things around this, but I think the, again, the work ethic goes back to what do you want? You know, what, what's important to you? Some people like that's money's not success to them. You can have as much money uh, as you want. And, and I, I don't consider that success. I consider success if I'm going out and helping people, uh, or if I consider success, I'm a teacher and, and I'm helping to, you know, teach kids and, and, and help them to, you know, to, to find out what their best, you know, uh, the best versions of themselves could be and, and all those things. Or I want to be cool, whatever it is that there's a lot of things 
uh, that you can measure success success by. Money's the easy way to do it, you know, and and and, and probably the most common. But that doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So you're, you know, so again, someone else's ethics might be like, like man, you know, money's money's the measurement. Money money's how I do everything. To me, that's my ethics, and that that that's how I'm going to measure that, and that's how I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm going to work very hard. I'm going to go through that. I'm not saying this is what I do, but I'm just saying if that's your mentality, um, that's how you're going to look at it. Um, you know, so someone else will be like, well, that that person's wrong or that person's bad. No, not necessarily. You know, if they're hurting somebody or if they're they're doing it. You know. Um, we can get a whole conversation about corporatism versus capitalism uh, when we get into it. I think corporate corporatism is, is horrible, I, and I think that's what's you know really hurting this country and a lot of places around the world. And I think capitalism is the is the best system out there and is one of the best things. The problem is most people look at capitalism and can and can confuse it, or look at corporatism and confuse it and think it's capitalism, and it's not. How how would you define either? Uh, so so, so capitalism, I would I would find. Defined traditionally as, as we look at capitalism, you know, a, a free market um, system where, you know, you, you can go and, you know, you can start a business, you can do all these things, you can work hard and get through it. Um, and, 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 you know, you have that traditional capitalism, you know, and, and uh, I'm a big believer in compassionate capitalism. You know, I, I think, you, you know, if you just had a, a capitalistic society and there are no safety nets or no, nothing there, you're like, hey, man, you know, you, you eat what you kill and, and that you, know, you go out and do that. Um, that doesn't work for everybody. And I think as, as a society and, 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 you know, this is why I work a lot of nonprofits and through that, I think as a society, we owe it to ourselves and to others, uh, to be able to support, you know, people that for whatever reason, you know, can't do that or, or have to have that safety net there or have those things. So, so I, I love that corporatism is when, you know, we, we take this, you know, take, you take that capitalism and, and then add in the, uh, the government, you know, and, and being able to, you know, use the government and use these systems in such a way where you're forcing other businesses out of business because of uh, of what you're doing. You know, it's it's not just like, hey, Jay's going to start a uh, a widget stand and I'm going to start a widget stand and we're going to, you know, both sell them <clears throat> and see who's doing better. That's great. But if Jay starts a widget stand <clears throat> and I'm over here starting a widget stand and, and I get the the local mayor of the town to give me some tax breaks and, and, and some other things where it doesn't cost me now as much to make, make the widgets and I'm going through this and now I'm, you know, paying a little money to these people help me with that. And now it's not fair. You know, we're, we're both doing widgets, but, but, but it's not a fair comparison now because I'm using things outside of that, you know, that realm uh, to, to uh, affect what you're doing business wise. <clears throat> so that's corporatism. When we see this, I'm very, I'm against, I, I think, um, you know, and I'll say this for, for a fact, I think Wall Street must die, at, at least the way we know Wall Street now. I think buybacks are, are horrible. Um, I, I think the whole part of, you know, when we look at Wall Street, you know, these companies are more worried about what does their stock look like and what is that, you know, making the stock, the shareholders happy than actually <clears throat> running the business. And that's why you get into you know, the Enrons, that's why you get into, um, excuse me, um, Sam Brankman freed, you know, that's what you, yeah. you have those things, the autistic, uh, yeah. um, so when, when that's why you have all those things happen, um, uh, because of the way those systems are set up, you know, when we look at, um, the way Washington works and, and people that go there to, to influence lawmakers and, and be able to get these tax breaks and other things that other companies don't have, that's a problem. When you have the four hundred one ks and all these going into the same, you know, stocks and everything else that that happened, that should never happen. You know, that, that was a huge mistake. So that all that is part of that that, that corporatism is all that those corporate. You know, when we look at corporates as these entities that almost like they're people, and, and when you start making these laws on other things, that's not you know, that's not capitalism. That that is that's a polluted version of it, and and it's making it where you know you're, you're you know you have that disproportionate money and all that. Like I'm, I'm all for it. You can be a billionaire. You come up with these things, figure those things out. Like somebody like Elon Musk, that's, you know, it, it, you know, if I, I watch some of the things that he'd done over the years, and even there's a video where he's talking about um, the way he's doing this thing. And the guy who's video on him, he's like, well, that's just for the booster. Right. And he's like, yeah. Um, well, well, yeah, now, now that you say that, I, I guess I could do it for all that. And like right there on camera, you see wow. him come up with this. I could do that for the whole thing. And then six months later, it shows him the same guy, brought the same guy back. He's like, look, now it's for the whole thing. Amazing. When you said that to me, it just, you know, 
you see someone like that and, and he comes up with these things and, and he makes, you know, hundred million, a billion, whatever it is, that's great. When, when you get into, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, using the, you know, the, the stock market in such a way where you're, you know, kind of make, you know, sh shifting the deals back and forth, you know, the whole GameStop, you know, that movie's coming out, uh, soon on, on, on that. I'm looking forward to seeing that movie, but that whole GameStop, uh, you know, if, if that didn't show you the way that, that wall street works and, and the way those things can be affected by just a couple of people making a phone call. Those that don't know what, what happened. Uh, so, so there was a run on, on GameStop, you know, like people, um, you know, Robin hood, the app Robin hood was an investor app where these guys are like, look, man, we're going to, you know, let's go at GameStop and, and GameStop stock starts going up and up, um, because these guys are all buying it. And, and they, they, they basically said, let's get together and let's really push this up and, and buy it. And I'm, I'm making it very simple for, for this. So there, there's, there's more into it, but. Um, in doing that and, and the way they were using Robinhood with GameStop and some other stocks, um, it was affecting a, a lot of the, uh, the, the traders on wall street in, in a negative way. Uh, so why these guys are like waking up like, man, you know, and, and you can go look up the, uh, the, the trailer for the movie and obviously, you know, Hollywood's going to add to it, but it's, you know, that you have these people, this, you know, everyday people just came up with this idea to like, and, and the wife's looking at him is like, how much we make? It's like we made a million dollars yesterday, like just mind blowing money to them. And then the wife of the Wall Street guy said, "How much did we lose? We lost a billion dollars yesterday." You know, like the, these two juxtapositions mm -hmm. uh, because of that. And 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 that just shows you, like this, you know, it's Wall Street is not this is you know, oh, it's simply you know, put money in and, and it goes in these companies. No, there's so many decisions that can be made, and, and there's so many people that know how to game the system. And I'll use that use that pun there because of GameStop, but they can game the system in such a way where they're going to make money, whether whether a company's going up, going down, sideways, it doesn't matter. Uh, and it's just you know it, it's gotten to a point where it, you know the the money needs to be pulled back out of that. You know it, it needs to go back into um, traditional business, traditional things like you know farms and other things that um, you know we we should be investing in these things into infrastructures and other things and. Um, people, you know, can, can start, you know, companies do that. You know, there's a lot of things that we could put money into that would help. And it, it's just, you know, it's, I don't say it's made up money, but it's real close to, you know, made up money. When you, when you look at it on paper, you know, I'm a billionaire, but in reality, you know, what, what's, what's really there, what's really behind it, you know, mm -hmm. and how much, you know, it, it is happening with that. So, um, so that's, that's, you know, again, getting, you know, when you, when you bring ethics into it and, you know, work ethic, that's just some of those things that uh, I look at and just I scratch my head when I see, you know, some of these things and, and, and the lobbyists that, that, you know, go on and, you know, in DC that, you know, to, you know, these companies, once they get this money and have this power and get these lobbyists, you know, it just makes it fair for the, the average widget person to, you can't compete with it. And that's not capitalism anymore. That that's, that's corporatism. What, what values would you say make, or lead to a business to start getting traction if you're exiting core values or at certain adages or ways of thinking in your experience i mean the 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 best way the first way to start looking at it is what what problem are you solving um what what are you coming in to do what do you, what is your business built to do you know if you look at you know there's so many great businesses that are built um, based off of, I have this issue and I can't find anybody to help me with it, you know? And, and from that, they're like, I'm going to start this, you know, this business that, that, that can do that. So, cause I, if I have this issue, I know other people have this issue, you know, and that might be just within a certain realm. You know, I might be, uh, <clears throat> again, I'm, I might be a video producer, you know, a video production company. And I have this, this issue with when I go out my jobs and, and do that. I'm like, man, if I did this, I could sell this to all, the, all these video production companies out there, you know, and then you look at that marketplace and you look at, you know, what, what's out there and do that. Or if you say, man, I can't, you know, uh, I, I see, you know, um, me and my wife get frustrated because we have this problem with, uh, you know, uh, our dog and, and, you know, we're, just, we're going through this or, you know, we, we need to find something like now you, you, you know, your market's got a lot bigger. How many people have dogs versus that, you know? So <clears throat> if you look at that and you're going to solve a problem and you're, you're going to do that, and then you look at how much that that would solve, you know, serve the marketplace. That that's first and foremost, you know. So if, if you know if you're doing that now, what is there exceptions to that rule? Absolutely, no one needed an iPhone. 
No one's like, man, I really need it. I really need something that's going to play all my music, have my phone, my video. My... No. Um, and that's that's where great marketing comes in play, where it's like, you know, now you're convincing people that you need this. You know, you, you, you need this thing. You know, now we don't have to be convinced because it's become such a part of our lives. But when Steve Jobs put the iPhone together, uh, we didn't need it. No, nobody was asking for it. <laughs> nobody even thought about it. Uh, but he was like, you know what, this is, this is going to be good if I can do this. Uh, and obviously he was right, you know, so, but he had a lot of money and time to put into it, you know? So those are things, if you don't have the money and time and resources, then figure something out that's going to solve an immediate problem that's going on and bring that to the marketplace. You know, if you have this grand idea of doing something that no one's even thought of, as a blue ocean, you know, that you talk about, you know, where it's going to be wide open for you. That's great. But you're going to have to show people why it's important to them. You're going to have to, you know, to be able to convince them of that. Um, so there, there, that's a, those two different mindsets. So, so both can work. Um, but I would start first and foremost, with just being a problem solver with, with, with problems that are already out there. You know, in hindsight, do you have pride around getting into video so early? It's ubiquitous now. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really is. I mean, and and that's something where, um, you know, it's it's going to go. I, w I wish more people would do it. You know, it, it is ubiquitous, but uh, you still don't have enough people doing it. A, a lot more people should be um, ma making making blogs and, and, and doing these things. And, and, you know, if you look at, because um, like, oh, people are like, there's so many people out there. Yeah, but there's nobody like you out there. You know, that, that's first and foremost. There's nobody that, that walks like you, talks like you, thinks like you, has your experience, uh, has gone through the things you've gone through that, that put, you know, that has put out videos, you know? Um, and, and because of that, you know, and, and, and where you're at, you can speak to people I wouldn't be able to speak to, you know? So, so Jay, when, with your experience and your knowledge, of those things, you can go talk to somebody like, man, that, you know, Jay, Jay, he, he just, he knows me, you know, inside now when he's, when he talks, I, yeah, man, he hits me where I, I wouldn't be able to talk to him and explain things like, like you and, and, and vice versa. You know, so, so I wish, you know, it, it is out there and it's, it's available to everyone. <clears throat> I wish more people would take advantage of it. I wish more people would put things out there. Um, you know, you don't need to have a huge audience. You know, you don't need to be the next Mr. Beast on YouTube. Uh, would it be nice? Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> you, you look how much money, uh, you know, J Jimmy's got a couple bucks there, but, um, but you don't need, you know, you don't need that. You don't need that audience, you know, to have a very nice life. Uh, you you could build a small tribe and uh, uh, you know very loyal people uh, that you can start to build that and and from there you can you know you know the the word influencer is used you know ad nauseum you know it's 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 ridiculous at this point but <clears throat> it's valid you know if you have this audience you have this tribe and you do this that's when you can start to be you know an Amazon Amazon reseller or start to look at these products and start to do that just like I was saying before. If you already have a client base and you found another product you could serve to them, you could double your business and you don't have to add anybody new to it. So that's that same idea and same concept that goes into that where, you know, you can have this there. So I, I wish more people would do video and start to look at that because that's, especially the younger generation, that's, you know, they're, they're spending more time watching, you know, YouTube videos than they are on TV. You know, TV's going away, you know, the, the whole writer, writer thing was going on with the writer strike and, <clears throat> figuring those things out um, and the, even the streaming platforms uh, that's important, but you, all those streaming numbers are down. You look at all those things because people are going out and finding uh, people they want, you know, YouTube now with the super chats, you know, if, if you go on live on YouTube, you have super chats and you can spend $2 or $10 and, and, and put a chat in there. And then while you're, you know, while that creator's live, that's going to pop up like, Oh, Hey, we got a super chat from Jay. And they're going to read that and interact with that a lot more than Ooh. someone just, you know, if they got a hundred people, they're all chatting and, and saying things. Well, it's tough to sit there. You, I can't sit there and read a chat and trying to talk to you and do all this stuff. If the super chat pops up and it shows you, you, you can see it in the chat, big red color or yellow color, whatever it is. Now I'm interacting with you more. And that's becoming more and more popular where people, people love that. And, you know, on a Friday night, and rather than watching this TV show, they're on live with, you know, th this person or that person and they're interacting and they're interacting with other people in the community. So now you're building this community, you're having this interaction, all these people are connecting over it and that's their entertainment. That's what they're, you know, there's more value to that to them than watching, you know, uh, uh, the, the late show or whatever, whatever is on TV that you want to watch. Other than the Eagles, of course, watch them today, five and O Eagles. That's, you know, you're not gonna stop watching that. 
Yeah, Jenna was was I heard her yelling on that while I was doing <laughs> podcasts downstairs, right in the, in the living room. You know, you just a, a thought came in my mind about you think that inevitably we're all going to end up being on video. The question becomes what that hierarchy will look like. Uh, I think Whether I, we like it or not. You know, that's a good question. I I don't know. Well, I can tell you this. Uh, in five years from now, there could be an AI version of you out there very easily, whether you control it or not mm. uh, is another story too, you know? So, um, you know, AI is going to know what makes the entrepreneur special that, that, that hard to conceptualize or, cause there's so many books on how to be a CEO, for example, that I've read and I'm reading and they all say uh, the, the best ones say that there isn't one way to do it. Right. And I think it speaks to this hard to grasp, hard to articulate, but very real thing about the human spirit that makes an entrepreneur a thing outside of just a word. Right. And my curiosity, I'm curious about your feedback on this, is what if in the future, you know, the entrepreneurs are the, just the people that they become those people that we look at. And then we organize around and then yeah. like, what if there's, it's happening. I think that's happening now. You know, yeah. it's, it's, I, I just, I'm scraping at this thought and I've been right. trying to figure it out. It's like, you know, is Gary V for example, just like an avatar of what the future is of the, just the, the everyday entrepreneur, that, that creative outlierish person that's just running around and doing what, like those, cre those creative, hard to understand you know, different things, but it's all on video. Right. Is he a, yeah, just so a big foreshadow for what the future is going to be? Yeah. We're all just going to be on video. Right. But I, but I think, you know, when you bring up like Gary, Gary V or, or Grant Cardone or, um, you know, so, someone like that, where they are this outgoing, you know, just kind of um, sometimes be bigger than life kind of, you know, thing. I don't think that's going to be the the average person. I, I think that that's still going to be this different niche over there. Some people love those guys. Some people hate those guys. And you're always going to see that. Um, <clears throat> I think you're going to have the average person uh, just on video, mm -hmm. interacting, talking, not being the, hey, guys, what's going on? You know, and, and just that, you know, that. Yeah, yeah I don't mean life, temperamentally. You know, yeah. <clears throat> I don't I mean temperamentally. I mean, yeah. just on video. It's right. going to happen inevitably. What are oh, your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it, it just it's it's just becoming more and more. Um, and I, I think most people, what stops them is just being uncomfortable. You know, being on camera and, and just and it's like anything else. You just have to go and start doing it. You just have to, you know. But I think because of FaceTime, because of the pandemic, and and, and you know, people having happy hours and you know, just meeting with their family over Zoom. Um, we become a little more aware. Isn't that interesting? Because being uncomfortable on camera is like, if you really think about it, that'd be like being uncomfortable just sitting at a dinner table or just sitting. It, 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 talking it to would, except, We're all on camera because there's surveillance is your eyeballs. Right. Except you can see yourself, you know, and I think that's, <clears throat> that's what one you mean you can see concern. yourself. I can't see myself right now. Where, where, well, I, I see you. So well, well, that's I, my point. If we got rid of the depends camera, you're looking at the screen. Sure. It depends where you're looking at the screen. I'm, I, I, I have the zoom up so I can see both of us, but, um, but then you're like, you know, you don't think about it in the time when you're just, you know, at the, at the dinner table, having a conversation or talking to somebody, once you put it on video and you go back and maybe edit it and you start to look at it, you know, maybe, maybe that's a secret. Like just don't go back and look at it, put it out. Don't look at it, you know, have someone else edit it and put it out. And people start look oh, because we're our own worst critic. You know, we're gonna be ourselves, oh my hair looks horrible there. Oh, I, you know, well, how did I say that? I always sound my voice is, you know, everyone thinks their voice sounds so bad because you know, we hear it differently. We don't hear the way yeah. we hear our inner voice. So, you know, there's all those things I think um that you know, that low self-esteem part of it um becomes becomes part of that, you know, and, and you and you stop yourself from doing it. So I think that's that's where it's different um than just being at the, the dinner table or something else. What do you think about podcasting? I think it's phenomenal. I, I you know, I just, you know, I think it's, you know, one, one, it's such a great way of, of communicating and being able to, you know, I walk my dog every day 
Uh, so we do about, you know, three to five miles, you know, depending on the day and the weather. Um, but I'm, you know, every time I'm walking my dog, I'm listening to something, you know, there, there, there's something, you know, it's either going to be entertaining. It's not, it's not always going to be learning. Uh, a lot of times it's something where, where I'm learning or listening to something, um, or I'm going to listen to some entertainment, you know, the, uh, the value tainment, um, you know, there's, there's the value tainment, um, you know, Patrick, Bat Bat David, um, but there's just that, you know, the, the thought of that, you know, where, where there's something that, where the, um, you know, education, and entertainment combine those kind of things, you know? So, um, when you look at those, those things where, Hey, I can entertain somebody also give them value. You know, that's where a lot of people find, you know, a, a, a Gary V entertaining or somebody like that, but they're also learning while they're doing and going through it. You know, uh, Andy Frisella has done a great job of that. He has a 75 hard program and, um, does a really good job with um, motivating people and is, you know, while, by the same time, giving them valuable information, you know? Uh, so, but I think it's one, it's such a great way of doing it. Um, so with something like that, I'm going to listen. The other, the other times I'm going to be, you know, I'll be watching it. You know, I, I definitely enjoy the video part of it more uh, if I can see somebody, you know, and uh, if you're going to do something where it's video, um, you know, other than this, you know, if we're having a conversation, you can do that. But, you know, if you're just going there, you're going to sit there and talk about AI or something else, make sure you're bringing in clips, make sure you're bringing in things that, you know, that's going to be visually pleasing to people and doing it. Um, and the other thing I'll, I'll tell people is even with video, audio is more important. Audio is still the most important thing. So I can watch a bad video that might be a little grainy or, but if the audio is good, I'm good. I'll still watch it. I get, you know, you could show me a high dev video and everything where uh, audio, I'm like, I, I can't watch this. What it, what is, you know? So or you have to do subtitles or you're not going to do it. You can't watch it. So the audio is always the most important. That's, that's how people are going to, but, but people love that, um, you know, depending on their, the way they communicate, you know, and mm. you know, people, you know, you can pick up on that when you're talking to someone, if someone says, I see what you're saying there, Jay. Well, they're a visual learner. You know, they, they're going to say that, or I, I hear what you're saying, Jay, but they're, they're an audio, you know, or, or the kinesthetic is, uh, I feel, I feel what you're saying, but this is the way I feel about it. You know, they talk a lot, they're, they're kinesthetic, you know, they're, they're, they're going all, more of the feeling. So when you're talking to somebody, you can pick up how they learn and, and what they do. Um, but yeah, m most people, you know, enjoy, enjoy the video with it. As a, um, I, where do you think podcasting is going? <clears throat> I, th I think you're seeing a lot of um, micro, and again, I'll use the word influence, micro influencers, you know, having a lot more out there that you're not going to have the reach. We're, we're not going to see, um, you know, the next Joe Rogan or, 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 you know, somebody like that, that, that just, you know, I think, I think Joe got started early. Um, he did something, you know, creative and, and did something a little different than, than, than what was out there at the time. Um, and again, he's just a curious guy and just has a lot of different people on there. So I just think it hit with a lot of people. Um, most times you're, you know, you're not going to see that, you know, but again, you don't have to see that, you, you know, you're going to search out the things that matter to you, you know, so, um, you're going to find, you know, whether, whether it's, you know, industry specific or, uh, you know, you're trying to build a business or you're trying to do these kind of things. You'll find uh, podcasts around that, and then you'll find the person you can relate to and the person that, you know, the way they communicate hits you. Uh, so, again, you're, you're going to have, you know, uh, I was just watching uh, Conan O'Brien and, and and the story of how he got on The Late Show. Such a great, he's such a great storyteller and, and, and just, you know, has obviously a lot of interesting stories to tell. But he talked about it. He's like, it was, you know, he's like, now there's no limit to the amount of jobs out there now. He's like, that was different then. You know, when, when Letterman quit and moved and he was, you know, he was leaving NBC, all of a sudden this position opened up that nobody thought would open up, you know, and that was a, that was huge back then, you know, and, and, and to listen to the story and, and all the things that went into it, it was, it was really entertaining. But, and, but he's like, now it doesn't matter. Like anybody can start a podcast, anybody can do these things, you know. Um, and, and there's like, now there's no limit to it. You know, th there was a limit before, you know, you didn't have YouTube, you didn't have these things where there was only so much that, you know, where you could reach people and use these things. Everybody can start a YouTube channel tomorrow, you know, and you know, they, they, they've set up certain ways to monetize it and you have to go through all that to, to make money off of it. 
but you could start a Patreon along with it and, and start making money by next week. You find, you know, you find 10 people that want to, you know, I, yeah, I want to watch this. I want to listen to this. And you say, yeah, I'm going to have some here, but I'm gonna, uh, a lot on my Patreon. They'll be exclusive. And you, and you get a membership. All of a sudden you start selling membership, you know, and, and you're taking control back from uh, YouTube or some of these other channels where, yeah, it's great to have monetization, but if I lose it or for whatever reason, I said the wrong thing, I mentioned the Ukraine war and, you know, they, they took the money away that week. I still have money coming in over here, you know? So there's so many different ways, so many different avenues now to do it. Um, you know, you, you don't need to be, again, you don't need to be huge. You, you just have to kind of build your tribe and, and, and just, you know, be authentic, you know, just again, we go back to starting that business. You're fine. You're solving a problem. Start, start talking about something that matters to you. There's, there's other people out there that it matters to them. What, what, I don't care. I don't care if you're talking about, you know, the Flintstones or, you know, you're talking about, uh, you know, the amount of water you drink. There's going to be people out there that find that interesting. that want to hear more about it. And they're going to, you know, find you over time. What can we do better with the culture matters podcast? <clears throat> um, I don't know. I don't know if, if, if better is the right word or um, what, what can you do? You know, may, maybe more define how you want, you know, the, the people that you're targeting, you know, d define those people and say, this is really, you know, do you, do you really know the audience that you're going after? Do you really know the audience? And, and that's, you know, you talk a lot about, I, I do love analytics. I do love numbers and things that go into that. So when I'm working with companies, I'm doing all this stuff, I'm working on their CRM systems. I'm working in their, you know, different places where I can look at those numbers. I can look at those analytics and say, this is why you're growing. This is why you're not growing, you know? So, so starting to look at that, um, you know, be everywhere, you know, be everywhere, you know, you, you know, there's, there's no reason not to, um, at this point, be on YouTube, be on Tumblr, have a podcast and have, you know, have these things across the spectrum, you know, have them everywhere because then you're going to open up more people can find you more people can look at that. But in doing that also, you're going to see the numbers. You're going to see the type of people that are starting to listen to that. YouTube has phenomenal analytics behind our channels, like showing you exactly who's listening to it, exactly how long, because they have to, because they're paying money, they're paying money to people for that. You know, so so they're selling advertising on that. They they have to, so not only for their users who are putting those things out there, but for the people they're selling money, you know, selling advertising to. You know, so so those are the kind of things you start to look at. And then just look at the trends, you know, like don't don't go all in on them, but you have to follow them. Like short form video is huge right now. You do a great job. Like if you go to your Facebook, you have little clips um on there. Uh, those some same little clips, so, you know, make sure they're in, you know, out on TikTok, in, in YouTube shorts, on Instagram, you know, you know, th those short form videos are huge right now. And they don't have to be a full video, like the way you do your clips and you have this little, uh, uh, the audio rep representation, the line showing the audio and, and a clip and listening to it. Um, the only thing I would do on top of what you have is add the words on there. A lot of people don't listen to the the shorts. They don't have their volume up. They're scrolling through, and if they see now the words as I'm talking, this is coming across the screen. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna pay more attention to that than a video. It's not. And again, there's so many so many different systems out there, uh, especially AI systems that can take. You know, I show people. I'm like, look, you have this video you did. You know, two years ago. It's great. Let's take that. Let's chop it up. Put it into uh, Opus Clips or another. You know, a system that's out there for AI. And it's going to spit out 10 short form videos, have the words on there, have all that, figure out the best, you know, camera angles for it. And then we can start throwing out, out on your short form video. So I think, you know, being out there more and more and, and make sure you're using these tools that are available just to get that out there more, you know, like you, you already know you, you've went through enough where, you know, this is the message you want to get out. This is who Jay is. This is what Jay wants to talk about. This is what you want to get across. So I think you've already, you know, you're way beyond most people as far as that goes. If someone's sitting down today and said, I want to start a podcast, you're like, great, what are you going to talk about? And they're like, well, probably, the, you know, and, and they're still trying to figure out, and that's fine because you haven't started doing it yet. You know, and, until you really start doing it and do it consistently, you're not going to figure it out. You've done it consistently. You, 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 you've already paid a lot of the price and put the things out there that, you know, just go and go back and find old, again, 
old ones that you did and, and, and refresh that stuff. That's, that's okay. You know, when, when people are using short form videos on, on Instagram or something, if you put something out a month ago and it, it did really well, put it out again. It's okay to do that because there's a lot of people who use those systems and chances are most people never saw it before, but they're going to see it this time around. So it's just being consistent and being out there and doing it, you know, on, on the daily, um, but using the systems and using the processes for it. So it's not like, you know, this is your full-time job. Um, once you figure out, you know, set the, set the right systems up, how to do it. Uh, it it's, it's easy to just, you know, continually put those things out there. I know people will sit down and, and do a month's worth of content in, in an afternoon. Boom, done. You know, they, they filmed all, they set it up, it's all set up. Now they have all their, their content for the month. Why are they doing all this? Um, de depends on what they do. You know, like the the one the one person I'm thinking of, uh, Tara Q on, on Instagram. Uh, shout out Tara. She she started doing it for. Um, she was with a, like an athleisure brand and and um, being a rep for them and, and selling that and selling clothing online. And she started using Instagram and other other platforms to help with that business loved what she was doing so much. Now she's teaching other people how to use Instagram and how to do short form videos and, and doing those things. So that's now her main focus. Uh, so I've seen the last year her just bl blow up on that, you know, but that, you know, so that became her focus. But for, for most people, again, you know, you have these systems out there that are free and you, you know, that have this, you know, you can put stuff out there for, for people to find you. Um, so there's, you know, it's just getting your message out there. They're, they're, they're getting, you know, whether it's their business, they want to put out there, um, everybody should build their personal brand. So if you're not working on your personal brand and putting yourself out there and becoming a subject matter expert in what you do, you need to start doing that now, right now. If you're hearing this, figure that out. When, when you get done listening to this, sit down with a piece of paper, start writing those things out there. If you don't want to be a subject matter expert in what you do and put videos out and do all those things, then why are you doing what you're doing? That's the question you need to ask yourself, you know? So, but if, if you love what you're doing, then start, you know, becoming that subject matter expert at it, you know, start putting these things out there consistently, start teaching people about, um, you know, I don't know, particle waves or, you know, or accounting or whatever it is, you know, things that, you know, most people don't understand or don't think they have an interest in and still people start talking about it, you know, and, and finding ways to, to make that entry and explain that. And I think that's why short form videos do so well is because people get really good at telling a story or explaining something in 30 seconds. And people can just take those bite-sized little things and say, Oh, that's, man, that's a great idea. You know? Oh, I can, you know, uh, I see a lot of people with, uh, you know, talk about life insurance. You know, it's, it's not a fun thing to talk about, but they put things out. Oh, I can use life insurance to invest money or I can do this. You know, wow. I never knew that. You know, now all of a sudden they want more information and I'm going to go, to the guy who I saw the video or the, or the woman who did the video and, and asked them for more information. Um, what's the purpose of a consultant in your point of view? Um, a, a consultant, the, the biggest thing is again, to leverage your time and to help with information and knowledge that you don't have now. And, to bring that in where you're not necessarily looking to hire somebody full-time. Um, you know, you, you want somebody more fractional uh, or you just need uh, help through a certain situation or, or a certain, you know, go, go through something where that consultant come in and say, yeah, no, I already, yeah, I've been through this. I've done this. Understand what you're going through. Help. You know, a lot of the companies do it. I have that knowledge. Let me, let me help you with that. You know, and, and you're getting past that, you know, that little hump. Now I have friends who are consultants that have worked with the same company for, you know, three, five, 10 years. Um, you know, those, those companies, that's a lot of times you see that more with the corporations. Uh, they're doing that just because they don't want to, you know, pay the benefits and the other things that the full-time people get. Uh, and, and they're kind of finding ways, uh, you know, to, to be creative with that. So, you know, from a consulting standpoint, I don't, you know, I, again, I did that with the hour marks and other things. That was when I was doing that. I, I, you know, now I'm more like, you know, finding people that can help with certain situations over time. And then, you know, moving on to another company, moving on to others. As I said, I work a lot with nonprofits now. Uh, nonprofits start, 
you know, they, they, that's, that's a great example of, you know what, they're, they're solving a problem. They're like, man, you know, we went through this one of the nonprofits that work with uh, Fido McKenna, uh, unfortunately lost their daughter to cancer and they know what they went through uh, here in Philadelphia, having to go down to chop and having to go through these different things and things that they had when they were chop, things that they didn't have. Uh, the fact they had to pay for parking all the time and go through all this stuff. So now they start a nonprofit to help families pay for that parking to help, you know, families to be there for, um, you know, help chop with a lot of nutritional programs and other things that they wish they had, you know, seen or had access to when they were there. Um, so they solved the problem, but again, they did it just, just to help, you know, just, just to be there and do that. But, you know, every nonprofit gets to that point where like, okay, if you want to do this, you got to start acting more like a business. You're still a business. A nonprofit's a business um, just because they're not looking to make a profit at the end of the year doesn't mean they're not a business and doesn't certainly doesn't mean they can't act. You know, they, 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 they don't act like a business because if they don't, they won't stick around. Um, so that's, that's a big part of how we help nonprofits and, and, and kind of go through all those things and find, you know, for-profit companies to partner them with. You know, I, I love, um, you know, you see, um, people help with these, you know, fundraisers and, and you have the, the GoFundMes of the world and you'll see all, you know, a lot of them popping up now, um, you know, golf outings or, um, you know, just uh, drinking events, come to this wine or whatever it is for, for raising money, these one-time events, that's good. And, you know, it builds, you know, people uh, builds awareness and does these things, but it's just like this one hit and, and, and then they're gone. You know, what we like to do is kind of build uh, relationships between the the for-profit and the nonprofit, you know, and, and build that over time. Cause we know having our own nonprofit, my wife and I, all the, the stuff that we had to go through, we knew what a big part of that was when, when companies like uh, Tri-County Federal Credit Union partnered with us. Um, we still have people that we're friends with to this day because of that, that, that became volunteers and helped us with that and helped us, you know, they came out when Tri-County you know, sponsored a room, but then they came out again for the next one. And the next one, all of a sudden, some were on our board, you know, and, and just, you know, so we just know the power of really partnering with these companies over time um, and, and what that can mean for these nonprofits. How do they go awry? Like, why is there that? That's that's a big part is they don't treat it like a business. Hmm. And, and they, you know, um, <clears throat> You know, there, there's, um, there's such a stigma around nonprofits and how they spend their money. Um, there's a great video, uh, Dan Pollard, uh, did a Ted talk said how we look at nonprofits is completely wrong. And, and he goes through and he has, you know, numbers and everything and says, look, you know, a nonprofit, the nonprofit wants to hire a CEO. They can well, pay him eighty eighty three thousand dollars, where a for profit could pay that same CEO, you know, three hundred four hundred thousand. So now they take that job, they give money back to the nonprofit, get a tax break, probably get on the board. Now they have all the prestige, and now they're probably you know telling the the person who took the eighty three thousand dollar job what to do and what not to do because they're on the board, you know. And it was just a, a funny way he looked at it, but but the whole point was. He had started a nonprofit and, and eventually it went away because people were not happy the way they were spending money on marketing and other things, but he showed them, he showed the numbers. He's like, look how much money we raised um, because of that, you know, and, 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 you know, nonprofits need to look at themselves again as a business. Uh, it's serving the community a lot of times or serving this purpose, but it's still a business and it still has to act like that. And it still needs to spend money on those things, you know? So when we go out and look at, you know, we'll, we'll partner like 15 for profits with one nonprofit and just ask them to give a little bit of, you know, a hundred dollars a month for, for every month where it's not a big deal, but it becomes a big deal when you have, you know, 15 or 20, you know, for profits doing it to one nonprofit, then they can spend money on marketing on the systems and need on the other things so when they get the other donations, they can say, yeah, all this goes directly to help the people or directly to, to the services that we want to provide. But we still got to spend money over here, guys. We still got to, you know, spend money on this. You know, at some point we got to hire people. Uh, you can only do it with volunteers so long. And, and we really need to stop putting the stigma on, on these nonprofits and, and doing that. You know, the, holding them accountable is different. You know, that's, you know, you can absolutely hold them accountable and look at the numbers and nonprofits have to show that they, they they'll show you the numbers and they'll show you all those things. 
at the end of the year where the money was spent. Um, but you know, holding them to, Oh, you can't spend any money on that. They're not going to survive, you know? And then again, that goes back to that safety that I was talking about. There's a certain percentage of people and services that are only going to be served if nonprofits are around. And if they're not, if they can't do that, those people fall through that net. Hmm. Where does your passion come from to, when it, in that sector? Uh, I think the biggest thing was, you know, my wife wanted to start the nonprofit because um, through, through a series of events in, in, in her life, um, she found herself kind of, you know, what am I going to do next? And, and um, saw a TV show and a, and a similar uh, nonprofit that was doing something that, that, you know, ended up designed for hope. You know, we, we did room makers for kids going through life threatening illnesses. Uh, so kids with cancer or kids going through brain surgery, whatever it was. Um, a lot of times, you know, charities might limit it to just kids with cancer or something like that. We were just, if your child's going through a lifetime illness, we'll do a room makeover. A lot of times the child's got to spend uh, an enormous amount of time in their room because they're, they're trying to, you know, and was called designing the number four for hope, rest, recover, heal, and dream were, were the four things, um, that were supplying to them. So it was kind of like, um, you know, move that bus, the, you know, the extreme home makeover show on a smaller scale. Uh, but we we would do rooms for the siblings as well because we knew they were going through a lot with their family uh, and everything. Where the, a lot of times the focus is on the child who's sick, understandably so. You know they might have the mom and dad might have to be down to chop every day or another hospital, and one of them's spending their time there or they're splitting time, whatever it is. Uh, and if they've got three, four other kids, a lot of times that you know that, that that can be hard. You know it's, it is hard on them. So we we would do room makeovers for them too. We so we would involve you know the whole family and bring bring it all together, uh, for for those kind of things. But you know going through that and seeing it was it was all volunteer. We spent all nobody got a salary. We spent all the money we had, uh, on, on helping the families and, and and doing these things. Um, so just seeing that and going through that, I saw like yeah, it's there's only so much. You know my my wife as the executive director put her whole, you know, her whole person in this, man. It just like, there was times when people, volunteers were supposed to show up and they didn't. So we were working on these rooms till like 1 a.m. You know, we, we, first we tried to do it all in one day because it was, we stopped doing that. Like we knew if we were putting carpet in or something or painting things, we would do a two or three day job. Uh, but some jobs we were there until 1 a.m. And the family was still there. The kids were there. They're all excited. They're all fired up, but you're just like trying to get this done. And, People didn't show up. My wife's there, you know, doing stuff by herself a lot of times. Uh, so just seeing that and knowing what we went through and then being on boards of different nonprofits or helping a lot of nonprofits that we met through that, seeing that's that's a common thing, man. And, and they all go through it. And it's just, you know, it, it's 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 hard work, uh, but it's also hard, uh, no, not physically, but also mental, you know, and, and just, you know, there's a lot of reward in it and a lot of satisfaction but it's just a lot, you know, that, that people go through trying to get these things done. And it's frustrating when you can't help everyone. You know, once you have a nonprofit, people come to you and, oh my gosh, you know, you can help. And there's only so much you can do too. So that's, that's really hard, you know? So, so going through that and seeing that, that's why, you know, the, the this network exists that I'm working on now is, is to, you know, to help with that and, and to help these nonprofits build up uh, to be able to help more and serve more people. How can people help with that? Um, Listening. You can go, I'm actually uh, be launching a new website. The new Arcus website will be launching new this week. So there'll be, there'll be a link on there. If they go to arcusllc.com. Uh, they'll see a nonprofit section on there uh, and be able to contact us through that or just email me now, matt at arcusllc.com. Uh, and I can give you more information and talk whether it's a nonprofit that needs help or People that want to help, yeah, well, you know, that's that's all we're doing is kind of you know making that connection and bringing people together. I love it. Yeah. You know, in closing, what, what would you say is uh, the theme for today for our uh, entrepreneurial listeners, uh, and let's say those that are a part of a, a business that don't want to be a part of it um, anymore and want to strike out and build their build their business. So right. those two people. What do you say to each? I would say I would say the theme in one word is opportunity. There, there, there's so much opportunity now, <clears throat> things that you know that are out there now because of the systems that are like AI and other things that people are worried about are going to take 
again, jobs away, uh, it creates a lot of opportunity. There, there's so much opportunity because, um, you know, people are looking, we, we have a change, a big time change in the guard, the way business used to be, uh, and, and the way that, uh, you know, younger generations don't want to be that way. What's that bridge going to look like? What, what's that going to be there where, you know, how, how are you going to bring businesses over and how are you going to, to, to make those things happen? There's so much opportunity there, um, to continue that because I think, you know, when you get the, you know, the oldest generation, the youngest generation, most times they're not going to see eye to eye, you know, but, uh, if you get someone, you know, in, in between or, or someone to cross over and say, Hey, this is how we can bridge these two. Uh, you know, I just was reading an article, the, 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 uh, secret weapon of the economy is the older generation has a lot of money. Uh, you know, then there's a lot, a lot of things going on there. They, they can do with it. Um, and, and that's one thing, you know, like find, you know, some of these people that a lot of wisdom there, there's a lot of things there that, you know, maybe business done different, but, uh, you can, you know, use as mentors, you can, you know, build, build all these things out there and then get some of this money to, to bring it over into, uh, younger generations and their business, uh, and how things are being done. But the, you know, the focus is changing and things are, you know, obviously worldwide are changing rapidly. There's a lot of things we look at like, man, this is scary. Um, but there's also a lot of opportunity because of it. So I think that that would be the one word I would say is just, there's opportunity, you know, figure it out, figure out how you take advantage of it. And I don't care what generation you're from, you got to work hard. It's going to take a lot of hard work uh, to be successful. And, and you just have to figure out, um, you know, if you're not willing to pay this cost, what are you going to pay over here? You know, and, and just, you know, figure out what's most important to you and, and how you can do those things. But if you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to have your own business, you got to work hard. No, there's no way, no, no other way around it.